Yo, 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 welcome to Crate 808, and today we are blessed by a bona fide hip hop legend. The man behind Cypress Hill and the soul assassin sound, DJ Muggs, is in the house. How are you doing, Muggs? What's the good word, man? What's happening? Everything's good, brother. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, thank you for coming on, bro. I really appreciate it, man. Honored, honored to have you on, man. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, we just been talking about your music as well in the pod. We were just like, we listened, we were going through Black Sunday the other day on the podcast. And um, so, yes, it's kind of like serendipity that you actually managed to get on and talk to us. So, I'm sure we'll go across that album at some point today. But one of the first things we ask every guest who steps into the Crate 808 podcast what's the least hip hop thing you've done, Muggs, in the last 24 hours? The least hip hop thing? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I took my kids to a um, Halloween horror night. Oh, snap. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a bunch of fucking mazes and fucking monsters and fucking scary shit, man. You know, <laughs> out here, I don't know if y'all got Halloween out there, but they celebrate that shit out here, man. So it's fun. It's a goof, you know what I mean? Go fuck around, have some laughs and shit. Let motherfuckers try to scare you. <laughs> Go on, tell me, tell me the truth, man. Did you, get, did you get a little bit shook? Was there anything that got you shook? Nah, they didn't. Last year, they got me once. They didn't get me this year. Oh, how did they get you last year? Well, they got these mazes. It's in an amusement park, so they shut. They got the rides and shit, so they got these giant mazes where you go in and motherfuckers just pop out all dressed up like oh. fucking killers and shit. What, like the you real people? Oh, no, 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 no. Too much, man. Too much. I've been yeah, it's all before. real shit. It's all real people and shit, so... That yeah, last year somebody popped out of somewhere and I wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Do you know what? It's, it's, you have to hide the kind of ability to want to clock them. You know, you think I just want to tap the jaw in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you got to watch out. I, I think it's funny now. It's, it's like a comedy show for me. The kids get scared, but I'm like, this shit is funny. But you know, every once in a while, you just don't expect some shit. You let your guard down and bam yeah man i know I always know. keep your hands up at all times you know that's what they say man that's what they say yeah man well that's good i like that man taking the kids out halloween into the spirit i'm enjoying it man but to kick off the interview man first first and foremost i've heard a lot of stuff where you've been talking from like i grew up with your music so i've heard you talk generally but just for the people listening now for the youngsters who may not know can you just tell me a little bit like how did you even get into the culture of hip-hop like when you were a kid like what what was the process yeah well I, I, i'm from queens new york so i just would walk outside my house and there was the culture right there the, it wasn't on the internet it wasn't on the radio it wasn't on tv the shit was outside in the streets so you know walk out there it was there was you know fools fucking break dancing and writing graffiti that's what i got into first writing graffiti and break dancing when i was really young you know mm -hmm. and then um i got into djing later on a friend of mine had a turntable in his basement we used to practice scratching uh that song rocket remember that song rocket rocket which one's that one Nah, i don't remember that one no it was by herbie hancock there was oh. a dj named D dst that scratched on rocket and it was it was a big pop hit but it was a lot of like you was like how the fuck did you do that shit so we could just fuck around and play around you know what i mean i didn't really take it too serious a few years later i used to go to my man's house and buy weed i was like 15 and um they was djs but they played like more dance music because the girls that's what the girls wanted to hear so i would just fuck around on their turntables and then i got better than them in like a week and they was like yo you should come play the party with me and i was like nah i'm cool man and they was like come on come on come on so i went and i played the party and i was like boom girls and she was fucking flavor and i was like i caught the fever <laughs> and that was it so i was there every week fucking djing the parties you know i get like 20 minutes set you know what i mean and i was cool but then i just got good and you really couldn't play hip-hop it was mm -hmm. in la you really couldn't play hip-hop there because it was just too slow for the for, for the it was house parties it was backyard parties mm -hmm. so you, you know what i mean so boom 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 then i started getting into the dmc competitions the yeah. dj battles i won the 89 um west coast D dj battles and and then you know got into production after that a couple of years later so you so you won it in 89 right the the dmc thing right yeah i won the west coast championship in 89 i came in third in america but that's the thing because your, your actual if i remember correctly like wasn't it like your first like gold record was that in 88 though right so you'd already been my first gold record was with 783 yeah in 88 my first group before cyprus i actually knew cyprus because cyprus was it was our neighborhood we were all friends we hung out but I met these kids from Brooklyn and they asked me to DJ for them. So I went with them and that's how I learned the music business because they had a record out already. We didn't know shit about the music business. We didn't know fucking what a studio looked like. We didn't know what a fucking drum machine was. You know, we didn't know shit. There wasn't no way to know this shit unless you knew somebody who had it. Uh, how, how old were you then, then, in 88, 89? Like? 
Um, 19. Wow, so that's young, bro. That's like, but learning the business at that young an age, you can kind of see like just you guys. Yeah, when these motherfuckers tell when they when they tell me they're young now, I talked to some kid the other day. He's like, I'm young, I'm 25. I was like, you old fool. <laughs> 20, 16 young, 17 young. Mm-mm-mm. Maybe by 25, you were like platinum. You were 25, you were platinum. By 20, man, I was a millionaire by 23 shit that's what i'm saying this is this is the thing that we find like talking about the 90s getting guests on and we realized people were so young like you forget like artists when they came out they were like naz was 16 and you know the difference was man if you had to go to this shit you couldn't just look at the shit on youtube or like watch the shit on tv you had to go you had to get on the bus you had to figure out how to get to that party then you had to figure out how not to get robbed and you know you just <laughs> And you had to figure out, you know, you had to you had to go to shit. You had to go to dangerous places to go listen to this music. Yeah, man. And sit there and watch. Then you know how you learn? You watched. Mm. And then that's how you learn. Then you went home and practiced. But there was no rewind and fast forward and nobody giving you hints because nobody wanted to tell you shit back then. They didn't want to let you in on the secrets. It wasn't telling you nothing. Nobody was telling you shit. So you had to work hard to just dig for yourself, kind of. Oh, you had to figure the shit out, man. Yeah, that's crazy. So you know, being on the bus, you know, being on the buses at sixteen, you know, fucking at three in the morning, you know what I mean, on the subways and going to these clubs, going to these parties, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy, man. But that that that's how we did it, man. But but you know, it, it made it worth it because you had to go through this shit just to even be in the game. And then when you got in the game, you had to be good to get any shine. So. You know, it's a lot different. Now, I'm not blaming anybody for the way shit is now because if I was 15 and there was the internet, I'd be killing it too. You know what I'm saying? But we had to go through a lot more just to get, just to be in the game. Yeah, absolutely, man. And this is, so just talking about like, because the culture was just around you and you just participating actively straight from Jump Street, because your stuff is so creative. Like it goes from, a lot of people are electro, go from electro to like breakbeat and that kind of thing. Your music has so many, so many different types of influences. I just wanted to know, like, where does your creative impulse come from? Was it around in your home? Was it your friends? Nah, you know, I mean, I, 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 I had a lot of different musics in my home. I had a, like, you know, from Motown to rock and roll and soul and funk. Like, I had a lot of music in my house, but that shit just came from being out in the streets, man. Just from writing, writing on the walls and breakdancing, like I said, and you know, DJing and all that, it was just, it was in there. It was always in there. It just needed something to pull it out. You know what I mean? You know, and, and you're a product of your environment. I'm sure if I would have grown up in a different place with, you know, with different people, I might've been a fucking scientist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Might've been coming out in a different way. It just happened to be like, this is where I was at this time in this space, you know? Yeah. But the, the interesting thing to me then is someone who's so young, got to remember that you're young at this point, your, your mind, your mind is being molded by everything around you. Right. You're, you're very, very close to people like, so we know we hear the stories of be real send dog and like banging and gang banging. Like what was it that in your life where you were like, do you know what? Music's the thing for me. Like gang banging is one thing and it's, it's, it's just around you. I'm like all the stories you've heard. Well, we was all that. We was all in the streets. Someone further with it. I was more about making money and selling weed. I was always, I was always more about making money and and, and fighting, you know, me, Mm. I was always money, 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 Mm. gang banging for like back then it was like, wait, I'm scrapping you for nothing. Like, no, I need to make money. Ah. We're going to fight for something. You know, I was always about, I was always smart. Mm. So I was like, nah, I need to get money and shit. And be. So that, that that was what I was at. I've always been an earner since I was a kid, man. I've always figured out how to make money. So so say you're stepping away from that, then you start making your own music. Where Who are, yeah. your, who are your influences? Like rap and oh, non My influence was, for, for rap music was um, Ram LZ, mm-hmm. Ultra Magnetic MCs, EPMD, Public Enemy. Mm. Like this was the shit, Run DMC. That was, that was my era, like shit. You know, Run DMC and stuff was influenced by like the Cold Crush Brothers and Kumo D. They was already old and they was influenced by Melly Mel. But the next wave was Run DMC and them. And that was the motherfuckers that I looked up to. Mm. Could you articulate what it was exactly about people at APMD and Run DMC you liked? Like compared to compa- other, other acts that were out at that time? Because the shit was gangster. It was like the first gangster. Run DMC's was like the first gangster rap. Think about it. But they didn't really curse. Mm. The shit was hard, right? Mm-hmm. And EPMD was like gangster shit too, you know. So it was like, oh shit, okay. She was that she was hard and just like in your face and aggressive. Mm, aggressive, that's the word. Man. Yeah, I wasn't. I was never really into like Tribe Called Quest and the Daisy Age shit and all that. Mm. I'm always like hard shit. Mm. I didn't. I, I never really got into the jazz part of hip hop. 
So this is the thing, right? So you know you say there about the Daisy Age shit and, and the native tongs movement. Over here, we're getting things a little bit later than everyone else, especially as I was a teenager. I was like reading the source and hip-hop connection and stuff like that. It was coming through that. And I remember like uh, seeing your video, and I think it was, uh, uh, I, if I could just kill a man, you got you guys, you got Cube. So I was like, yeah, clearly I can see that. And then you see Q-Tip. So I was like, oh shit, like you guys. Yeah, he was there because he, he, he was just walking down the street and just walked up like, look, I like Tribe Called Quest, don't get me wrong, and I liked some of their songs, but mm, mm. I wasn't into the cult that part of the culture. Mm, okay. What, so he was just walking down the street and he just came into the video? Yeah, he was on the street. Like, just, he was just walking down the street and boom. That's crazy. Because that, that was in New York. That video was shot in New York in downtown. So, you know, if you, you don't even know this part, though, Prodigy and Havoc was in the video. They were there. They weren't, they're not in the video, but they were kids. No way. And, what? and they, they're there. Mob deeper in the back as well. Oh my days! That's I crazy. don't know. I, I, yeah, they told me. I, I didn't. I didn't know them then. I didn't see them, but I was told. You know, they were. They were at the video. They seen that shit. They were there. Mm, that's crazy, man. That is crazy. Yeah, it's like that in New York. You walk around New York, you run into everybody. You know what I'm saying? When you when you in New York, mm. it's so small, New York. You mm. know, it's like 13 miles by by two miles. Like you know, shit's small, man. But no, it's good to know. I mean, everyone calls it the Mecca for a reason, right? Um. So when we right. talk about the 90s and we talk about like the culture at that time, I have a few questions for you, just generally. Like when you when you were growing up and you were making these beats, what kind of kind of creative were you? Were you patient? I want to work on this. I'm like pouring over something, or were you like bang, 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 bang this shit out? Like, do you know what I mean? Like with your beats, I was I was a little more patient back then. Things took time. Things did moved at a different pace you know you put out every two or three years back in the days you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you know if, if 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 i was figure if i had fucking you know a banger a week i would be happy you know if i had a hit song a month if i had a hit song a month now i bang out four or five beats in five six hours shit is that because of technology then or is you know, that just because I, 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 I recorded 20 well i recorded an album last week in three days with this kid named al davino Oh, we recorded snap. 15 songs, and then I did another five songs last week with Crime Apple. So I did 20 songs last week, just from Monday to Thursday. Jesus, that is hard work. Yeah, yeah. Then I had to take the weekend off and just go meditate and, and train a little bit and sweat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, for sure. You deserve that shit, man. This is the thing. Is, is that because of technology then, do you think, or just because you've got your craft? Yeah, down? I think it's technology, you know, and 100% technology. You know, mm. the times have changed where I used to have to get up and go to record stores. I would I used to spend time in record stores like two, three days a week, five, six hours a day. That was part of the job, right? And driving around town, then you know, you was limited to your you you was limited to your equipment. So you would just have to make beats at the house. And then if you wanted to go put them, you had to go find a studio and pay $125 an hour for the studio just to drop the drop the music down. And that was just recording it. Then if you wanted to mix it, you had to go mix it. That's more money. You know, then how do you get it out? Yeah. You got to get a record deal. There's no way, even if you want to press your own shit up, if you had that money, what, you can go put it in the five local stores in your neighborhood. Like mm. There was really no way to get it out. So it was a lot harder, man. That's crazy. You got to really man. do some shit, do some more figuring. Now it's like, put the shit out tonight if I want. Yeah. So you're talking there about Crime Apple and you've done so many projects recently. We're going to talk about Mayhem Lauren, Lauren in a bit as well, because we've got to talk about him and, and your new stuff as well. I just want to know from from yourself and being someone from my kind of school of uh, hip hop, a lot of people in our in our age are just very happy listening to our age stuff. All these nah, I like it all, man. You know, I, I'm a student, man, and I'm just learning. I'm just getting started, brother. Like, I'm just getting started in my life, really. You know what I mean? Life begins now for me. So I'm like, I was, I just fell back for a few years and was, you know, I got a bunch of businesses. So I was just taking care of my businesses, raising my kids. Mm. And then, then I was like, okay, I got to a right place. So that's why I've been back with a fury these last three years now, mm. you know, put, I put out six albums this year. That's crazy. But now it's on. So now I'm like, I feel like all that other shit was just practice, practice mm. warming up. You know, I'm a fire by the likes of fucking Salvatore Dali. I'm inspired by like people like Picasso. When these motherfuckers got in their 50s, 60s, they's in their prime, you know what I mean? And, mm. and now the way music is, I'm like, why is hip hop the only music where once you hit like a certain age, they're like, oh, you old, you know? I think there's a fan base like you and me, people that grew up with this, that's a certain age now, where it's like, nah, you just got to make fly shit, you know, so I'm on the cutting edge of everything. I keep my ear to the street, I'm on top of everything, you know, I see who's the next kid coming up that hasn't been popped. Mm. I go in there and fuck with them, mm. you know what I mean? I, I stay in the mix and I keep my mind my, my full sharp, man. This shit's fun, though. I'm having a good time, man. Yeah. I'm having a really good time, but I've been able to, like, 
you know, educate myself and how to go and try to make music for money. Because when you're trying to, to pay the rent doing this shit, you do some dumb shit just to pay the rent. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I do this strictly because it's what I feel like doing. I mean, this is the thing. I, I completely agree. It's, it's I think it's bullshit when someone's saying, oh, no, no, you know, it, the rap games for old young people. You're right. If you're talking about commercial rap, maybe. But for me... And when you're talking about commercial rap, yeah, 16 to 25, you know, like, or, and same with pop music, like Christina Aguilera, 16 to 25. Exactly. But, but if you're looking at where you're, where you're, because I know you, you like a lot of different types of music, I think hip hop's matured better than rock. Like, yes, yes, you have Led Zeppelin. Yes, it still bangs. Yes, you have uh, Sex Pistols. Yes, they still bang. But if you actually look at artists like yourself, Black Thought, uh, Sky Zoo's been dropping stuff in the last 10 years where you're like do you know what they're getting better like Muggs is actually getting like your evolution of your sound is actually getting like it's just eclectic man and that's I do think hip hop is aging better than a lot of other genres and that's because of people like yourself yeah. who are still out there banging man doing there's something shit. about the music man you know you fucking keeps it's like keeps you young man when you stay in the mix you know we eat good over here we eat good we train we drink green juice you know what I'm <laughs> We yeah. really keep our mind sharp, our body sharp, our spirit sharp. Mm. I got energy. Mm. Put it this way. I'll run circles around the 20-year-old mugs, and mm. I'll slap the shit out of them. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. That's, that's dope, man. That's dope. Talking about the evolution of your sound, you've done West Coast, you've done East Coast, you've done electronic music, you've done dubstep, collabs with people like you 2 and fucking Dizzy Rascal from our ends. What's influenced this latest evolution of your music, the stuff that you're banging out now? Well, you know what it was? I got bored with hip hop for a while. And then the whole culture made a left. And I'm like, yo, what is this? You know what I mean? And the shit mm -hmm. we like, everybody, it was like, no. Well, here, first of all, around 2005, the ass dropped out of the music business. Mm -hmm. All sit, selling records, selling CDs, all that shit stopped. But YouTube really wasn't popping yet. And Apple wasn't popping and Spotify. They didn't figure out how to figure this game out. And I went from selling my worst records, mm. selling 300,000 records to selling 2,000 because there was no way to fucking, Jeez. the game was weird. Then everything got really pop mm. and the shit was weird. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go over here and run these businesses. And then I started hearing a lot of, like, I stay on top of music. So I just love music. And I loved electronic music, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love dubs. And I was like, I'm like, this shit don't fucking work on the drum machine. So then I just, I said, I'm going to just take a year and learn all these production techniques that all these kids are doing right now. Mm. So I just took a time and humbled myself and educated myself just to learn new shit. Mm. So I just learned new shit. And as I was learning it, I just put the songs out that I made. And that's when I dropped that bass for your face, just for fun. So after I was done doing that, I'm like, all right, it's time to get back to my shit now. You know what I mean? It like cleaned my palate and it just gave me a, it gave me a fresh, a fresh feeling again. You know what I mean? So then I just started, got back on my fucking hip hop shit. Damn. So it's like we're well, witnessing the education of mugs live kind of thing. That's crazy. You got to educate yourself, man. The thing is, is when you a master, mm. you got to constantly be a student. Mm. All up there on your course, there's only one way to go, but down. Mm. I believe in constantly educating yourself, constantly challenging yourself, constantly pushing yourself constantly living outside of your comfort zone mm. you know and once you're rich and successful this gets harder and harder you know what i'm saying so how are you going get, to get to the future you it's there everything you want in the future it exists you gotta figure out how to get to it you know what i'm saying so mm. these are the challenges i put on myself i'm just like so i'm just getting started joe i got I, I got five albums done for next year already recorded oh shit really damn that is crazy yeah. man that output is just ridiculous man and you're making well, the videos in a different way now like from running clothing companies mm. and and stuff like that they work almost two years ahead like oh. when you see stuff dropping this summer that shit's been done for 16 months already you feel me mm. so being on that timeline and having that in your brain it flip things because when you have time you could do more stuff mm. you could do more stuff you could pivot more you have more room to breathe. You could balance your life out. So mm. you have personal time for your people, for your loved ones, mm. for holidays. And you're never working behind the eight ball. Back in the days, I used to just hurry up and I'm always behind and trying to finish. I'm always behind. And, okay, the album's done. Put it out. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, we got it. it was always like rushing and being behind. But you know that old saying, if, if you slow down, you get more done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel it you. It works, man. It's like life became like the matrix, like the bullets flying in slow motion. <laughs> You know, that's how everything looks. <laughs> that's when you know you're fucking good, though. That's when you know you're good at what you do. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So you know when you're talking about like working with these new artists, one question I had on that tip was, um, what what makes you want to work with a certain person? Like, what is it you've got to see in that person? Like, may I gotta listen to their shit. 
I mm-hmm. gotta listen to their shit first of all, mm-hmm. and then I gotta be like, "Yo, like I, I gotta want to rewind it, and I gotta want to check for their next record." That's part one. Then once I figured out, like, "Oh, this motherfucker's good. He's got my interest." Then I gotta meet him because if I don't meet you and sit down and talk to you and see who you are, because now I'm gonna spend time in a fucking studio with you. I'm gonna spend weeks and hours and hours and days in a room with a human being, away from my kids, away from my friends, away from what I want to do. So that quality of that person's got to be on point. I ain't working with no fucking dickhead. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, oh, you cool? Oh, you real cool? Okay, let's go do a song now. Uh, what kind of artist are you? Are we just going to make these songs and drop them? Or do you take direction? Do you want to learn? Do you want to grow? Some of them don't. Some of them want to stay right where they are. And I'm like, cool. But some of them want to learn and grow and get better. So then I, th- th- that's when I teach them and tell them, look, if we, you do this boom, 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 you'll go here. You know. So if they're willing to learn and shit, then I'm going to put the energy to help them go there. But if not, then we just record and mm. I give them a pound. We're cool. Mm-hmm. We're cool still. Mm-hmm. You know. And um, But yeah. I don't put more energy into them. Yeah, that's that's interesting, man. That's interesting. I like I like your uh, criteria of trying to work with someone. It's a it's a good place to be and then grow from, man. It's it's good, man. I like that. Yeah, you know, I'm always like, hey, let's do this. I'm like, let's do a song, man. See if I even if we like working together, you know, and see how it goes. Because um, I don't like to put myself in. Because when I start some shit, I'm a hundred. I go a hundred. I don't know how to go half. I don't know how to go half. I only know how to go a hundred percent full speed. So if you ain't gonna work harder than me. Mm. and fucking be on point listen then yo okay I, then i go oh i see what it is this is like a one-off one project homeboy's cool mm. we can have a beer and shit and talk shit but that's about it you know what i mean you ain't mm-hmm. a business party you, you ain't built for this shit like i am yeah 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 Yeah, it's a high bar man it's a high bar um you, earlier you talked there a bit about like um your younger self just your career generally is there any advice you'd give to the younger mugs like the 19 year old 22 year old mugs right now yeah fuck, a lot of advice man you know what i mean we like just, you know just focus man slow down and focus mm. but you know the thing with us man is we had managers that all they wanted to do is make money so it was mm. tour 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 studio studio tour studio tour tour studio mm. and you know the difference with other motherfuckers they come off tour after four months of a tour and they chill for three months i went right into the studio recording ice cube working with the beasties working mm. with fucking you know house of pain i, I was never i never I never had a break. So time management, time management, slow down, meditate, focus, you know, just little, little life lessons, man, that you kind of learn mm. on the way. If, 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 if you want, you know, some motherfuckers are still living in a perpetual fucking circle, right? Doing the yeah. same shit they were doing in their twenties, wondering why shit ain't changing for them. Yeah. 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 From traveling and being around good people, man, you pick up shit. Yeah, man, definitely. And this is the thing, I can hear it in your voice. Just, just, just your uh, like energy, man. I love that shit. I love it. So I know like Black Sunday for me is like, th- that's as, as a tapestry of Sonics. Like right. I remember when I first heard that shit, bro, I was like, this is not just hip hop. Cause I grew up like with different influences. Like you had soul, but we had a lot of rock. There's a lot of metal. A lot of yeah, metal. I grew up with rock too though. See, I grew up with, I had an uncle, my mom's brother, my mom's younger brother about 15 years older than me. He, he was, he lived in our house mm-hmm. and he was all into rock and roll. He had eight track tapes, black light, velvet posters, Lava lamps, smoking weed, (laughs) beads. He was a straight rocker. You know what I mean? So I was just to see all this shit and look at the covers and shit. And like, so growing up with, with, with that kind of rock and roll, I've always had that aesthetic to my music. I've always looked to rock and roll for inspiration more than I did James Brown. You know what I mean? Cause I didn't grow up with James Brown. That, that was on the streets. I found that later in life by me going and searching, but that I didn't grow up with that in my home. But that's the difference in your music, though. That's what I'm saying. Like right. you can you can hear that from the Cypress Hill sound, the Soul Assassin sound, compared to the the. And we rock. come from a time, man. I come from a time and a place where you couldn't sound like anybody, or you were whack. Mm. They weren't playing your records. You weren't getting respect. You couldn't look like anybody. You mm. was whack. You wasn't getting on stage. Nobody was giving you respect. You couldn't sound like them. You couldn't. You were whack. Nobody was. DJs weren't going to play your shit. They weren't going to let you on the club. They'd push you off the fucking turntables and take your fucking records. You know what I mean? So (laughs) being an original and having your own sound was the fucking key. So if you look at all the groups that came out then, you look at Dre, you look at Cypress, you look at De La Soul, you look at Wu-Tang, nobody sounds the same. And that's what we grew up with, dog. That's what we grew up with. And that's what it was about. Like you had to be, you had to bring something. You had to be unique. Mm. Things have changed a little bit now. You know what I mean? It's Mm. like cookie cutter. A lot of things are the same. And that's cool. If that's what you like, that's cool. I'm still 
wanting to push the envelope and reinvent the wheel. I always want to reinvent the fucking wheel. But do you remember in the 90s that happened, though? I remember, like, I grew up with all that kind of rich tapestry and all these different types of Sonic in the landscape. And then, like, by the time I was, like, going to university in, like, the late 90s, there was a lot of cookie-cutter hip-hop. And I was like, holy shit, like, what's yeah, happening to I would the say, shit I love? Yeah, that's like when I moved out of New York around 98, 99, I noticed the whole pendulum shift, and I was just kind of like, okay, this got weird. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And you, And the thing was is, a lot of it was because a lot of these fuckers that work at record labels have the power to sign groups, but they don't have vision. Mm. And they're just looking for what's hot and they're looking for what's hot. So they sign what's hot. So whatever's hot, they're looking for something that's like that. Mm. And there was a lot of the visionaries, you know, that weren't the visionaries. There were still the Jimmy Iveens and the Dre's and, you know, the Dane Dashes and a few people. But then there were some other people in there, you know, and that's the same time when Puffy brought all the fucking... Mm. fucking glitz and glitter and all this bright ass fucking lights and all this bright ass colors and we were like what the fuck is this shit you know <laughs> yeah, what i'm saying so different wasn't it yeah and then it, then it was like then all of a sudden then all of a sudden you got a guy who wasn't a rapper that mm. started rapping so mm. everybody who wasn't a rapper said oh i could do this shit Mm-mm-mm. exactly so man. then you got all those motherfuckers that said let me rap and i'm not a rapper and all that shit started at that time you know what i mean you know there was a, there was definitely a shift in the culture but then it's like you know hey that's what it is. Yeah. So fucking, you're going to sit around and complain about it or you're going to figure it out, you know? Exactly. I you're decided to figure it out. You, sometimes you got to leave things alone for a minute. That's why I just left it alone for a few years. I'm like, it's going to come back around. That's quite wise, man, to do that. That's, you, you know what I mean? Like a lot and people, you know, the music business in 2016, it was the first year it was profitable after 13 years. Damn. And, um, and now the music business this year, 2000, I don't know if it was 2018, I think, mm. 2018, it's been the, it's, it's the most profitable in the history of music business that it's been. That's crazy. And the other funny thing is hip hop's the number one music in the world. Rock and roll's pretty much doesn't exist anymore as we knew it. Mm. Mm. So when we're going about, we're talking about like Black Sunday and obviously your other work that you've done with Ice Cube and other people, like, just a huge amount of fucking people that you've worked with. Your career highlights mugs, man. I'd just love to know what you what you treasure really in your career and if there's something you'd love to just be remembered for generally. My first album, my Cypress first album because that was all my life, all my life, all my ideas, all my dreams, all my hopes, mm. everything I did, that was it. It was right there. It just, and it confirmed, like, it confirmed all my creativity. It, that confirmed everything. Like, you the shit, motherfucker. Mm. And ev- and that was everything right there. And it was mad successful. That, and then, um, and now, mm. and now, working with Mayhem, working with fucking Rock Marciano, working with Crime, working with Mock Hami, working with, you know, all these kids. This is like, now we're in the future right now. And to be here 30 years later, and be on the fucking top of my game with the top underground hip hop record label in the world right now. Mm-hmm. This is it, man. This is just what kidding. hard work and focus and dedication. You know what I mean? And yeah, and just and just sticking true to what the fuck you do, man. And always, always be a student and stay humble. That's it. That's it. That's I love that. Once man. you know it all, Holmes. All right, you know it all. Fuck out of here. You know everything. You know what I mean? Mm. All right, cool. Yeah, I love that, man. I love learning anyway. So someone like yourself, when you're co-signing an artist like Matt Comey, who are, who's not across my radar, just because it's your name on it, I was like, I'm going to check what Muggs is up to. And I'm like, holy fucking shit, this guy's amazing. Like, Matt Comey's wicked. So it's interesting yeah. that the co-sign is getting me educated constantly. And I love that, man. I love learning new music. I love learning like new artists who are coming up. So big up, man. Big up for doing that. Um, you know, it's funny, though. Some of these new artists, have they work hard, but some of them don't know how to work hard because everything the internet they just want to do a record real fast and throw it out and do a record they never had to go to stops and had to do in stores they never had to get up and you know be at the six o'clock a.m radio station after you were at the 2 a.m mix show the night before you Jeez, know what i mean and yeah. like the hard work we had to pull we, we we used to play in front of you know what a one stop is uh no go on. one stop is where the records would go where all the mom pop small stores would go to the one stop to get their records mm-hmm. and if they didn't know what a new record was the people at the one stop would be like hey you should check this record out you should check this record it out here's mm. a couple test ones play them in your store and see how it goes we would have to do breakfasts in those places where there'd be like 16 people eating fucking their eggs in the morning where you're performing oh i can kill a man Holy shit. the work we had to do to get our fucking records out there mm. i think right now it's very easy to put your music out mm. it's very easy to sit back in your house not even leave the fucking 
It's the world. You, 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 you're never going to outwork us over here, man. Oh, we work, Holmes. Like, <laughs> and it's fun. It ain't even like it's work. This is, this is just how we do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We man. get up. We run. We go hit the Muay Thai gym. We train, homie. Mm -hmm. We fucking eat good. We make music. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We celebrate our lives. And we fucking, we fucking focus, my nigga. I love that. I love that shit, man. Yo, this is Rodney P, the rhythm killer, big blood clot things within her, you heard me? Yeah. And we're here listening to the Crate 808 podcast. Big things is going on right back to the early morning. If you don't know, get the blood clot. No, you feel me? Yeah, big old man cam every time. People, people, people. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And remember, subscribe it, rate it, review it, and go on and tell your blood clot friends. For real. Hey. So we're just moving on to some of our staple questions that we ask every guest when they come on, man. I just want to know, now you're on, have you got today's DJ Mugs top five MCs, like your favorite MCs? Today, right now, Rock Marciano. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rock Marciano. Conway. I like. Yeah. I'm, fuck, I'm fucking with West Side Gun. I'm fucking with um, Mayhem. And I'm fucking with, um, who else am I fucking with right now? Um, I like this kid, SD Knack. He's out of um, Massachusetts. Okay, SD Knack. Okay, I'm, I'm checking for him. I'm checking for him. That's hot, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Griselda are killing it right now. We say that on the pod a lot, but they're just like bringing the fire right now. Um, they are. They, they know how to work. Do you know what I mean? They know how to hustle and they know how to work. There's a lot of people putting out quality music, but they don't know how to hustle it the right way and they don't know how to work. Mm. And they got to get out there and you got to do this shit. You know what I mean? And you got to be consistent mm -hmm. and you got to put out the right amount of shit, but not too much shit. You know, it's like, I don't want to just throw shit out every month for no, with, with no purpose, with no purpose and no war plan behind it. You know what I mean? I always tell these dudes, what's the, what's the end goal? What's the end goal? Where are you trying to get to? Oh, oh if you don't know, how the fuck are you going to get there? You have to picture, you have to picture the ending in your brain and see it very vividly and clearly. So you're working backwards. That's quite good. I like that. Um, yeah, I work all different directions at the same time. Mm, mm, mm. Do you, so when when we're talking top five MCs now, what about all time for your career? Like just generally, you know, I can't even say that. That would change. But I'm like, it's that's impossible. I love so much fucking yeah. music, man. Fair enough, man. You know, Fair enough. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's ridiculous. How about UK? What's popping out there? I heard these kids called um. Holy Mountain. I heard a couple of joints. Yeah. Alchemist played me. I like this shit. Oh, Alchemist is on that, is he? Okay. Yeah, yeah man. Alchemist is on that. They do. I'll be with Al all the time. Al's my brother, man. So me and Al's always on it. Al keeps pushing me all the time. We just push each other. Alchemist, mm. Evidence. Like he's on his game, boy. I'm yeah. the only motherfucker that works harder than me. <laughs> Mate, they're absolute legend. One of the probably the best to do it right now as well. He's just fucking killing it, that boy. Um, Absolutely. I, I was gonna say, um, out here right now, mate, the game is unreal. Like UK hip hop has never been this successful and fruitful for itself. I don't know if you heard Stormzy, he's doing bits. Kano's got a new album, Matt, he's doing bits. You know what? Dizzy's still doing things here and there. Like you'll hear him. There's a guy called Ocean Wisdom. Uh, he is. You got to listen to Ocean Wisdom and do a collab with him, and then oh my days, if that happened, I I'm done. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But is it grime? Is it grime or is it like, is it, is it like electronic types music or is it trap or is it like the raw shit we doing? So, so, so Ocean, Ocean has got that grime flow, but he works with hip hop beats as well. He flips it quite a lot. So when you, I think here now, grime is just like massive now. That's that, that's ours. So we, we, I remember growing up and we'd like be taking what, what hip hop was from you guys. And it was like, always got that tinge of like, it's almost an American art form when grime blew yeah, up. That's it never worked. They were trying to use the slang and talk like here. It never worked. It never translated. But you mm. know what I always respect about the UK because I've been going there since like 91. It was like, mm. y'all always started your own your own musics from trip hop, mm. from fucking, from garage, the speed garage, to fucking, to um, jungle, drum and bass. You know, I used to be over, I used to be over there with Goldie and the metal heads and be over there in the jazz club when Goldie would have his night and shit and like, just seeing all these musics, y'all are inventive with music. You know what I mean? And let, let's not go back to Black Sabbath and fucking Led Zeppelin. You know what I mean? So yeah. when I go to UK, I get mad inspired all the time. Like Man. mad inspired because it's like mad progressive. Y'all are mad progressive with music. So mm. when I heard Holy Mountain, I'm hearing these kids. I'm like, oh shit, they're doing some shit, some mm. some shit we on. But and they but they're using their own slang finally instead of trying to use American slang, which made me dig it. 
Mm, mate, I, lo- I love that, man. Your, your drive and, and passion for music. Uh, when, I, when I get older, I want to be like that, man. I, I, I am like that now. And I just hope nothing in my life dulls it. And I just listen to you. I'm like, fuck, man. This is like one of my heroes. And he's fucking still like this. I love that shit. So, Muggs, man, I've got a few questions. Our listeners are fucking in, yep. into, into the game. And, and they just had, when, once they knew that you and Mayhem were coming on, they were like, whoa, 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 last, let me ask this. Let me ask this. I, I kind of like shortlisted it. So I've got a few few questions from some of our listeners. Go on from here, Simon. All right. Got Simon. Simon Ward, you're one of his favourite producers. He says, does your music still move you in the same way it moves us? So, like, if you're somewhere, you hear one of your beats just in public, are you, like, nodding your head and breaking your neck, or are you instantly taken back to the process of actually creating it? It depends. Both, man, both. But, you know, I don't I don't really – it's both. I'm mm. like, yeah, that's just banging. Sometimes – and then, and then you know, other times I'll be like, oh, shit, I'll go back in my brain depending on where I'm at. I'll go back and it'll – it's, you know, it's like a time machine, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, but it's good to hear it because sometimes when you hear music out, you hear it and it's totally it sounds totally different. Mm. Sonically, it's the same, but, you know, you, you've heard it in the studio. You've heard it in your car. Mm. Now you're hearing it out. And you're like, yo, shit's banging. Fuck, I didn't know it sounded that good. Mm-mm. Okay, that's dope, man. And and then we've got Kirk Simons. Uh, he says, big up, first of all, for your production on Vinnie Paz's Floating Goat. And he's right. Yeah, that, that production is hot. He was saying some of your favorite beats. He said, like, your top five beats of your own. Or you don't have to make five, but, like, just favorite beats of your own that you were like, yeah, man, that, that shit's still Yeah, nice. I haven't made them yet. I'm still trying to get there. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that answer, man. I love that answer. Wicked. Uh, and then we've got some other ones here. Uh, will there be a Muggs and Griselda album from Dr. Toxic? I have no clue, man. I have no clue. Like, Ooh. you know, that's not my call. But, you know, if if, if it ever comes about, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. we'll see. Okay. Okay. And one question I wanted to ask, because I was hoping to have Mayhem on here with you. Mayhem's all about the food. We all know his, he, he fucking loves the cuisine. I want to know, has he introduced you into some food where you've been like, damn, I've never tried that before? Mayhem's introduced me to fucking some of the best food I've ever eaten in my life all around from LA, New York, wherever we've been. He, like, let's go to this, let's go to this restaurant in New York called Don Pepe's, mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. it makes good fellas look fake it's so real it's so gangster <laughs> italian mafia shit in there the yeah. food is fire every plate feeds about four people so you order three plates mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying everything's fucking family stuff yo may knows food man believe me yeah besides knowing how to cook he, he knows the spots yo may's one of my best friends man that's my brother he stays in my house when he's here you know what i mean like i got mm. my guest house here we always just we come and i'll, I'll turn i'll put the studio on my dining room table and we'll just start that's how we made that last ep we did it on my dining room table just drinking wine not even in the studio we went and we went and recorded in the studio but i made all the music right on my table in my kitchen what members only members only ep yeah 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 <laughs> It's crazy, man. I was like listening to Wavy and Blue Chinese, and I'm like, holy shit, the beat is Well, those beats were made because I was like, and he's like, yo, yo, that one. I'm like, all right, so I'll finish it up. I'll put some next shit on. He's like, yo, load that. Like, I'll just have a sample. I'm like, you like that for sure? He's like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, all right. Oh, my days. Like, like Wavy, I, I might have passed Wavy up and not even have made the beat if made didn't go, yo, I like that. Fuck off. No way. You can't just yeah. off-cut that beat. That beat is unreal. How? That's, oh why I like, that's why when May's sitting with me, I make some shit I might have not made. You know, I mm. might have went past it. Because May has a good ear for music. Like, I yeah, really yeah, respect yeah. his ear. So he'll pull me. He'll be like, yo, I like that. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Then I'll go and, mm. you know, the, our, our chemistry is like that. Because once you're friends and you hang out a lot, mm. it allows time to do that. Some of the other people... I only see him in the studio for eight hours. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this is, I think some of the best shit is made when you're friends and the shit that the shit, the magic happens when you're not in the studio, when you're just at the pub drinking a beer, you go into the club or you're eating dinner mm. or you're hanging out, smoking some weed. That's when the record's made. Yeah, you feel man. me? Yeah, man. Definitely. Those are, those are those subtle layers. You can't, you can't just come up with all that shit sometimes in the studio in eight hours. Mm. And just jumping onto Mayhem and, and the members only, well, you've done quite a few projects together. I just want to know quickly, like, how did you guys meet? Like, how did you even meet to begin with? I met May. I was at Alchemist House about 2012. Mm-hmm. And I'm hanging out over there, and Action was there, and May was there. Mm-hmm. And then May was, I, I was like, yo, this is May and Action, and boom, boom, and you mm-hmm. got any beats? So I left May three beats, and I went home. It was about 11 at night. Mm-hmm. I woke up at 7 in the morning, and I had three songs in my inbox. Oh, snap. Oh, he's got that yeah, workout. So I was like, yo, it made me go, 
Oh, fuck, because that's what I mean. If you want to work hard like me, mm. it may, I ain't got no time to fucking waste with no fucking rapper, yo. Mm. Some lazy motherfucker that thinks he knows everything. I'm cool, dog. Mm, mm, I'll mm. tell you, niggas, I've been a millionaire for 30 years, fool. Mm. Go over there. I don't do this for money. I do this to be around cool people, to do cool shit. You know what I mean? So in, at this point in my life, if I could be around dope motherfuckers and make dope shit, like that's a dream come true right there. So when I got when I see May's work ethic and he was serious, I was like, yo. But then I was busy and he was busy, so we did a little bit because I fucking did the last Diane Word album. I oh did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did nine songs on that, so they worked. They worked slow. Mm. You know, me and May was like going back and forth. But then once I was done with that, boom, mm. and that that was it. Then we just we've been going. Me and May's got another album halfway done right now. Well, I said we got eight songs done. Oh snap! Okay, I'm here for that, yeah. man. I'm here for that. I know he's. I know he's dropped. He got a record with Derringer. He's dropping in February. Oh, so. Me and May, I, May's little brother, Hologram, mm -hmm. will probably drop his album in February, March, and then me and May will come next summer, mm -hmm. and we'll come next fall because we're gonna, we we got we're gonna, we're gonna drop two albums next year. Me and May, uh, you gonna tour? You gonna tour him with that? We'll see. We'll see. I might. I, I might. I might do. A, I might do a couple little runs here and there if it's mm -hmm. worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if I go on tour, I, I go for fun, man. Eh? You know? Yeah. I'll yeah, go to yeah. have like a little holiday. I'll go. To, I'll go to Europe. I'll stay. I might stay in UK for a week, mm -hmm. and then we'll do. Five or six shows, then I'll stay in Greece for two weeks, you know, oh, nice. at, at the end. You know what I mean? That's how mm. I tour now. I'm not, I don't try to kill myself like I used to. Yeah, I'm I feel you. I feel you. Touring for eight months a year like Cypress, you know? Everything's about fun, man, and quality of life. Everything's about quality of life and balance, man. Having a good time, being around good people, mm. good vibes, man. If it yeah. ain't none of that, keep your motherfucking ass over there, homeboy. I ain't got no time for you. Yeah. And then just one thing I wanted to ask about the mayhem thing, then you're talking there about you liking, you educating yourself and always trying to learn. Is there something you've learned from the relationship you've got with mayhem at the moment? Yeah, man. May teaches me shit all the time. I think it goes back and forth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. May's open to learn. Mm. He's not closed-minded, and I'm open to learn. I'm not closed-minded, you know. Mm. Just different approaches, different things, different ways to look at things, you know. Mm -hmm. Being patient with some things, you know what I mean? And mm. and things I might have not done, he might explain something to me. And I'm like, oh, shit, I never looked at it from that fucking lens, mm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. You're right, my G, let me go. You know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of ways to look at things and a lot of ways to go about things, and I'm open-minded. Mm. If you bring some logic to me, if, if I was like, I'm not doing that, but it makes a lot of sense to me, and I'm like, let's try it. That's sick, let's man. see how it comes out if we don't like it fuck it but let's try it i'm not against trying shit that's sick that's sick and um coming to the close of another decade we've got uh, 2020 coming up what do you think about the last 10 years of hip-hop like is there any favorite albums or artists or or something that you thought you know this is gonna last the man the of last time? i'm really excited about the last three years of hip-hop to be honest with you mm -hmm. the last three years have been like late 80s to me right now moving into the early 90s i think we're move, about to move into the early 90s Damn. right now you know what i mean i think we're like in 1990 mm -hmm. and i just see it getting better for, for the shit i like i mm -hmm. just see it about the boom mm. i see that shit about the fucking start taking over and having its own lane you know what i mean but lane in the commercial lane Mm. Where you got to think when we came out, we came out compromised. You hear no be singing on books, radio. It was pop music because it was pop music because it was popular, not because we went and made pop records. Wu Tang was pop music. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. You know, fucking NWA was pop music. Like that shit was popular music. Mm. But the shit we like right now is it ain't selling what the young thugs are selling. It ain't selling what, what Travis Scott is selling. But in a minute, it's going to. Mm. because even the kids when i watch when i watch the kids in the junior highs and the high schools through, through my children's eyes they tired of trap they want their own hero they want their own musical sound like the generation that, mm. that was all into trap and everything wanted their sound every generation wants its own heroes they want their own sound because that mm. sounds your parents sound or your grandparents sound but now they're rediscovering this sound again and to them that's theirs this is like this is our this is our shit, you know, this is mm. our generation. So, mm. you know, I just keep your eyes open. Watch, watch what I'm saying. That's dope, man. That's dope. Well, man, Muggs, thank you for coming on, man. You've abs Oh, before that, no, no, no. I've one thing I had to ask you. I knew because with your ear and your ear for sound, we talk about Wu-Tang Clan here. You wrenched them just there. Uh, we big, big fans. And like the amount of Wu music there is out there. Is there any track that you think is slept on or needs more credit from the Wu? Where you're like, you know what? that Because we've got a little playlist going like slept on Wu bangers. Is there a slept on Wu banger that you wow. have? Wow. I don't know, man. That first Ghostface album, like mm. that first Ghostface album. Oh, fuck. There's a lot on there that I think people like kind of gloss over. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Like, um... Yeah, oh. Iron Man had some bro, shit on Poisonous Darts. Like, poisonous Darts is ridiculous. 
after the smoke is done, after the smoke is clear. Mm, I feel you, man. After, uh, that bo- was one of my favorites. Yeah, that's going on, man. That's going to go on. Uh, Box in the Hand is fucking good I, as well. I'm going to that album today just for that. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm going to go to, the, I'm gonna go to the gym and put the fucking that album on right now. Sweet. I like that, Muggs. I like that, man. Well, thank you for blessing this, man. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Keep smashing it. Just keep hey, doing... Hey, homie, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your time. Appreciate your time and your energy, man. You know what I mean? And, and all my people in the UK, man, keep it up, man. Keep inventing this music. Keep pushing it forward, man. You know, keep being the elitist. And, yeah, you know, man. man and, and we... keep just doing what you're doing, man. Respect from, from over here. Man, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. And before you leave, we always ask, last great piece of music you heard? Could be old, could be new just the last great piece of music you heard oh i just i, I just heard um lowrider by um war oh okay okay not heard a lot of war for yeah, a I was, while i was listening to that okay okay yeah, i was listening to that this morning nice i like it man so wow people yes there it was dj mugs on crate 808 just blessing us dropping some real wisdom uh just bringing the realness man the passion i love the passion in that and just want to say yes can't believe we got a legend from the 90s on our 90s podcast we were actually supposed to get him and mayhem loren to chat together especially as he's been doing all his work and that in the recent years uh but we couldn't get mayhem and him in the same room so we did it separate and in a way it's a blessing for us all because we've got two episodes so mayhem's going to be coming soon and yeah hope you enjoyed this one thank you for all the love uh go rate review subscribe share tell all your mates crate808.com crate underscore 808 on instagram crate 808 on twitter uh, and yeah man just say hello to us uh give us your feelings on the pod who we should have on what album debates we should do we're gonna try to do a few more of them in the run coming up to christmas if we can uh, i know you people love them man so yeah man i've got to find time to get the boys together and do those and yeah man just following the lead of people like uh, uh the dad bod rap pod uh killer keller out there shotgun the yorks the Tories, pod um man rhymes like dimes there's a lot of podcasts out there all doing unique things and we love it man so yeah shout out all you people doing your thing and shout out grindhouse music for doing his thing and doing the music on this podcast go check him out if you need anything beats wise so yeah keep it locked for mayhem later on in the week and for now i'll catch you on the flip side peace <laughs>